Requirements Analysis and Specification The organization today is uh, introduction about analysis, what is specification in requirement analysis and specification. Then something about uh, SRS uh, document we'll see. Decision table, decision tree and then summarize. So many projects fail. Why? Because they start implementing the system without even determining whether they are building what the customer really wants. What is customer requirement? If you start building it without exactly knowing it, project will fail. So it is important to learn the requirement analysis and specification techniques thoroughly. Basic aim a goal of a requirement analysis or specification phase which comes after feasibility analysis phase is just to understand clearly and fully the user requirements. If there are any inconsistency, anomalies, redundancy, problems, then you need to remove them from the requirements. Finally, you have SRS documents. So document requirements such as SRS documents should be prepared. So requirement analysis and specification, it has two distinct activities. First is your requirements gathering and analysis. The other one is specification. That is, we call it as requirement analysis and then specification. The person who does this means who undertakes requirement analysis and specification. He is known as systems analyst. He is responsible for collecting data which is related to the product, the software product which you are going to make. And then he needs to analyze the collected data. Means understanding exactly what needs to be done. Then write SRS. That means software requirement specification document. What is going to be the deliverable or output of this phase? SRS document, of course. And then this SRS document is to be reviewed by the end user or the customer. Okay. This uh, SRS document, it is to be reviewed, which uh, has SRS document forms which forms the basis of all further development activities. So this is the basic building block. What about requirement analysis? It consists of two main activities. First is gathering or collecting the requirement and then analyzing these gathered requirements. So analysts gather requirement. There are various means in, by which analysts may gather these requirements. First is, you know, a very keen observation of existing system then studying the procedures the existing procedures which are there and then having discussion with customer and end users then analyzing what exactly needs to be done so if the project is to automate some existing procedures which are which are known by this analyst now for example automating existing manual accounting activities or say the task of system analysis is quite easy now, you know, just to automate. But in this case, analyst should immediately obtain the input and output formats and what are the actual or accurate details of operational procedures which are going on in the end user, uh, say, organization. But in the absence of working system, there has to be uh, a wide variety of imagination and creativity that is required. Then again, interacting with customer is always a good idea. It requires a lot of experience. What are the good attributes, qualities you would suggest in a system analyst? Good interaction skills, of course, then imagination and creativity, and then experience. Then what about analysis of gathered requirements? After gathering or collecting the requirements, we need to analyze it. That means clearly understand the user requirement. Any inconsistencies, ambiguities, and incompleteness needs to be detected or found out. So these incompleteness and inconsistencies, they are resolved through further discussions with the customers and users. What do we mean when we say the requirement is inconsistent? Maybe some part of the requirement contradicts with some other part. There, there is some sort of contradiction. For example, one customer say turn off heater and open water shower when the temperature goes beyond 100 degrees centigrade. While the other customer have an idea that 
off heater and turn on cooler when the temperature is again beyond 100 degrees centigrade. So this, this is an idea of shear contradiction. What about incomplete requirement? Some requirements they are omitted, they are forgotten, maybe due to uh, you know intuitiveness or oversightedness. For example, the analyst has not recorded when the temperature falls below 90 degree, the heater should be turned on and water shower turned off. So requirement analysis involves finding or achieving a clear in-depth understanding of the product which, are, which you are going to develop and then removal of all ambiguities and inconsistencies from the what we call as the initial perception, customer's perception of the problem. But it is quite difficult to obtain, right? A clear in-depth understanding of the problem, especially when no working model is available uh, to you for the problem because you're a software guy. So experienced analysts take considerable time. They have experience. They take some time to understand the exact requirement the customer has in his mind, not in analyst mind, but what exactly customer would want. So experienced uh, system analysts know because he's experienced often as a result of painful experience that without a clear understanding of the problem, you cannot develop a system which is acceptable or uh, termed as satisfactory to the end user. So several things about project should be clearly, crystal clearly understood by the analyst. What the problem is? Why is it the problem or important uh, to solve the problem? And what are the possible solutions to the problem? Then the complexities that may arise while you uh, attempt to solve the problems. But there are some anomalies and inconsistencies or ambiguities. They are very certain means uh, escape even most experienced eyes. If you have a formal model, if you create a formal model, many of these, uh, you know, uh, subtle anomalies and inconsistency get detected. Subtle means those which are odd to. But after collecting all these uh, data regarding the system which you are going to develop, remove all the inconsistencies and anomalies from the requirements and then systematically organize requirements into SRS document, Software Requirement Specification document. So the main aim of this SRS or Software Requirement, requirement Specification is systematically organize the requirements that you have evolved during requirement analysis and then document them properly. So SRS document is useful in various contexts, means it is the most important document to start with. First, you have statement of user needs, then you have a contract document, then you have a reference document, and finally the definition of or for the implementation. What is a contract document in SRS? Requirement document is a reference document. So SRS document is a contract between you, means the development team and the customer. Once this document is approved, signed by the customer, any subsequent controversies, because controversies may arise, they are settled by a reference simply to the SRS document. So once the customer agrees, uh, he is satisfied with this SRS document, now the development team may initiate or may start to, uh, to produce or to develop the product according to uh, SRS document, the requirements which are being recorded there. Then the final product will be acceptable to the customer if and only if as long as it satisfies all the requirements recorded in the SRS document. So the SRS document is known as black box specification. The system is considered as a black box where you are not aware of internal details right now. Only you have uh, you know, visibility to the external, that means these input data and output data, input and output behavior, which is documented. So SRS document concentrates on what needs to be done, what needs to be done, and which carefully avoids the solution how to do, because this is going to come in the design aspects. SRS document serves as a contract between development team and customer and should be, should be very carefully written. The requirement at this stage written using end user terminology because he should understand you want him to sign so it has to be in his language but if necessary you can have a formal requirement specification that may be developed later. What is the property of a good SRS document now? First it should be concise at the same time it should not be ambiguous so neither concise 
or say neither ambiguous but concise so it should specify what the system must do but not really how to do it easy to change that means if it is well structured it can be changed and consistent no inconsistency is acceptable complete of course all requirements should be there then traceable you should be able to trace which are part of the specification correspond to which part of the upcoming stages that means design and code etc and likewise vice versa and verifiable that means system should be user friendly this is not verifiable how can you verify that it is user friendly so every con every content should be verifiable so srs document normally contains uh, three important part first is functional requirements non functional requirements and the constraints on the system so it is desirable it is expected to consider every system is performing some set of functions or they have some functionalities and these functions fi they are considered to be transforming that means transforming a set of input data to some sort of output data corresponding output data like this this these are performing set of functions converting input to output so for example let us take searching a book so input is an author's name and what would be the output the detail of the author's book and the location of these books in the library like this author name apply functionality of searching and the book details should come up so functional requirements should describe a set of high level requirements functional requirements high level requirements and each high level requirement take in some data from the user and should output some data and each high level requirement might consist of a set of identifiable functions as well if it at all it is possible and for high level requirement each high level requirement each function is described in terms of input data set output data set and then processing requirement or processing required to actually obtain the output data set from the input data set so this uh, was introduction to srs and with the company this non functional requirement shortly thank you so much take care